giving away 50 billion dollars to the people, to the companies and the corporations that do not need it is not the way to go. It is wrong. We believe that 50 billion dollars should be put into job creation, uh, to a greener strategy for climate uh, uh, issues, and in order to protect the people. If there is a family, if there is a family that if all of the families in this country are satisfied, can meet their bills, then it would be a, 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 a very good Canada. And you have to look at it at a mi macro way and not a micro way. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Fernando. If we can push that microphone to the end there, Julie Higginbutton from the Liberal Party is running for South Surrey, White Rock, Cloverdale. Uh, Mr. Uh, Higginbutton was uh, uh, since 1983 a city councillor in uh, Surrey for 21 years or so. 25, 25 years. Uh, so I think it's the longest uh, uh, councillor running in, uh, in, in that position. So please tell us, uh, Judy, what uh, is your idea of uh, becoming a member of parliament or why would you be one? <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak um, and I really want to talk about the vision of Canada and, and where we're going. I believe sincerely that we have to look after the climate change and we have to look after the fact that we need a greener and cleaner Canada. And the Liberal Party green shift will tell us to tax big polluters, very similar to another program, but we will be the party that will put taxes back into the pockets of the people who need it. Seniors, small communities, uh, low-income individuals, and those who need, um, are, who are seniors. We will not tax at the pump because we have enough taxes on gasoline. But a family of two children earning $20,000 will save $2,500 in taxes. Germany does this program, so does Denmark, Finland, Norway, and Sweden. And these are the countries in the world that truly have the best economies because they are dealing with the problems of the future. Now, a Liberal Party also agree, agrees and wants a just society, which was a common phrase under the uh, tutelage of Pierre Elliott Trudeau. We want to ensure that people have the proper health care, accessible health care, portable health care, and it is not based on need. We also know that we have to put more people delivering health care, so our priority is to put more money into bringing nurses and doctors and help them graduate, and we did that a few years ago. Being an educator and a teacher, and I taught in Richmond, you're a little too young for, um, you know, me being able to have taught you. But I did teach Brenda Locke, who is a good friend of mine over the years, in grade five. And what I will tell you is education is the big equalizer. We have to ensure that every child in Canada has an opportunity for the best education we can give them. And to help young students, we are going to put now um, more grants to give them the opportunity to take university without going into debt. Now, we have a strong record of fiscal management. The conservatives think they have some sort of a monopoly because the name conservative says we really are the ones to do the fiscal management. But you know, we gave the Harper government a $13 billion surplus, and so far this year they have $1.75 billion. We eliminated deficits, we balanced the budget, and we created jobs. And I will tell you, if you vote the candidates and you vote towards the Liberal Party and Stéphane Dion, a gentleman, you will get the government that Canada needs and Canada deserves. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Judy, and we'll uh, continue with the uh, latecomer here, uh, Mr. Daliwal. He is the incumbent for uh, Newton, North Delta, actually. Uh, he was elected in 2006. He's a professional engineer and land surveyor, active member of the Surrey Board of Trade, and a spokesman for the local businesses. Uh, in three minutes, Mr. Daliwal, tell us why people should continue supporting you as an MP. Hmm. 
first of all, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. And uh, as you mentioned, my, my name, my full name is uh, Sukh Daliwal, and I have had the opportunity and honor to serve uh, my constituent and, uh, and, and your viewers uh, as their member of parliament for the past three years. And my roots in our community run deep. And this is where I have raised my family and have built my business. Representing your viewers bring forth to me a responsibility that I take very seriously. I have always been accessible, as uh, Brenda said, that she will be. Uh, and I put my riding ahead of partisan politics, my party, and my own personal views when it comes to representing the people that has elected me. There are three key issues in this election. First, we are on the edge of major economic crisis, as Judy Higginbotham mentioned, just because of Stephen Harper's irresponsible management. Uh, we are on the brink of deficit for the first time in a decade. The Liberal Party has a proven record on fiscal management. We have a plan to reduce taxes for ordinary Canadians, for small businesses, and balance the budgets and cut the waste that Conservatives are throwing money away now. Secondly, we must ensure the safety and security in our community. The Conservatives, Harper, Stephen Harper, I see another PC here, uh, Stephen Harper Conservatives have played politics with their own crime bills and refused to pass a number of legislations that Liberals wanted to support. And you know what it is? Our children are at risk just because of the Harper government not cooperating with the Liberal Party. And my record has been very clear. I'm tough on criminals, I stand up for the victims, and I tackle the root causes of crime. The Liberals have a guns and gangs strategy that will make sure that the gangs and illegal guns are driven out of our community. Finally, under the Stephen Harper, Canada has become an international embarrassment on environment. The Liberals have a serious plan to fight climate change. It is the only plan that will help you adjust to rising energy costs and will put more money in your pockets. And we must act now for the future of our planet and for our children. We have the plan. We have the team and we have the discipline to go on responsibly. On October the 14th, I ask and urge you to support me and the Liberal team. All right. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much, Mr. Suk Daliwal. And uh, you were referring to uh, Mr. Brand Marlett as the conservative. He's actually a progressive conservative, conservative which that's is why I different. And, uh, that's why I said. That's why I, okay. I turned my tone to <laughs> to Harper conservative, right? That's right. So that's that's the reason. <laughs> uh, okay. Now we're going to continue. We're going to continue with uh, Michael Wolf. And uh, Michael, you have a question there that uh, was given to you from NowPolling.ca. Now, we have a, a whole list of uh, topics on NowPolling.ca. I don't know if everybody had a chance to look at it, but we have uh, municipal and provincial and federal topics. And under the federal topics, we have foreign affairs. And what we're uh, exploring today is foreign affairs. So there are several questions on foreign affairs. And uh, one of them is uh, given to uh, Michael Wolf, and he's going to perhaps read the, the topic, what it is, and tell us uh, which of the choices that have, are listed there is your choice. And if none of them, tell us uh, which would be you would be willing to put it on. The topic that, that I have in front of me is peacekeeping forces. All of the respondents chose that only the United Nations should be authorized to intervene in international conflicts. I fully support that, so this poll would result in unanimous decision that Canada, or any other nation for that matter, does not have, should not have the authority to, be, to intervene in international conflict. The Green Party of Canada stands on a platform that promotes peace does not promote war, will not accept war, will not accept Canadians being involved in armed conflict and, and resulting in death of our own 
and death to other um, citizens of other nations. So we need drastic uh, changes. And, and having polls like this demonstrates it. This is where democracy comes from. You ask the people to create um, I, the changes that are necessary in the government. And unanimous results like this show that we should be reducing our conflict and going completely to a peacekeeping mission. So you're saying that you would vote for the first, first choice there? I would vote for the first choice and the only choice and that can, has been can you selected. Just read, can you just read the first choice? The first choice is? again is only the United Nations should be authorized to intervene in international conflicts. I feel we have a common ownership over this planet. We have failed in the past. We've signed on to United Nations um, documents, but we failed to follow and live up to these agreements, such as recognition of Aboriginal rights, Kyoto, um, and phasing out uranium mining as another major okay, platform Michael. item. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know if uh, Richard, uh, Rashid. Arab, uh, I'm, th I'm sorry, Rashid, mm -hmm. it's Rashid, not Richard. Rashid Arab is ready with uh, with uh, an answer to that topic, or you want some time to think? No, that, that's to that's you. fine. I could. Yeah. You want to talk? You want to tell us exactly what that one, that's fine. the topic <clears throat> is, and you want to read the first answer? Yeah, the topic I'm about weapon of mass destruction, nuclear, chemical, biological. All right, and what is your answer? Well, my answer to this one uh, should be controlled through United Nations, including the five superpowers countries, the economical G8, and everybody else, not exclusion, not getting superpower country more controlled. It has to be controlled by United Nations only. Is that, is that the first answer there? What oh, you the want me to go answer? through the answer yeah, here? Can you just read Yeah, manufacturing and possession should be outlawed and enforced by the United Nations. Mm -hmm. But you, you, your answer is that it should be controlled, not necessarily out loud. It should be. So <clears throat> your answer is different than what it says. Oh, so I so, have to follow, sorry. No, you don't have to uh, uh, agree with it. But what I'm just uh, pointing out is that you, your answer is not the same as most people in that poll have chosen. Well, we, yeah, okay, it has so, to be out loud and controlled by United Nations. Okay, right? so you, you're, you're thinking of outlawing it rather than controlling it. Correct. Okay, well, thank you very much. And, and the reason b briefly was because? Because this is what you give the society, the nation, the powerful nation such as the United States to bring democracy in George Bush and Harper's. They want to bring the democracy on the back of the tanks instead of bringing it through ideological and process peace mean. This is why I oppose the weapon of mass destruction. Right. I came from torn up country, it's called Lebanon, and I know what does it mean. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Rashid Ar and we continue with another topic on the same uh, foreign, uh, foreign affairs issues with uh, Brian Marlott. So what, uh, please read the, the question and, and what, uh, what are some of the answers there and tell us whether you agree with them or not. Well, uh, the question that we're being asked to address concerns mili our military intervention in Afghanistan. And rather than the answers that have been proposed there, I would suggest the following. That we need to define the mission and beware of mission creep. And we need to withdraw our troops at the earliest responsible date while fulfilling our responsibilities uh, as in, our, in the larger sense uh, to our, world, our, our responsibilities as a world citizen. And also in, in the sense of our broader responsibilities in foreign policy to act as responsible members of the Commonwealth of Nations, as a member of the, common, uh, of the United Nations, and as a neighbor to the United States, aware of all of those considerations, but at the same time being concerned about the people of Afghanistan. Thank all right, you. so you're, you're, you uh, mentioned withdraw. Mm -hmm. Is not that the first answer there that says That's withdraw our troops immediately? And I said at the earliest responsible date. Oh, so not immediately, With, but withdraw them. At the earliest uh, responsible what, what date. What do you think it would be? Six months, a year, two years? What? I don't think you define it in terms of days, months, and weeks. It could indeed be something we need to do right away. There are changes to uh, the circumstances in Afghanistan right now which suggest Mission Crete may in fact be underway. You note in the last couple of weeks there have been commando raids into Pakistan from Afghanistan through Kandahar province. There have been uh, air raids into Herat. I believe there were 90 people who were killed there, 60 of them children. This suggests that the mission is changing. Therefore, I would suggest that we need to make, be absolutely clear with Canadians about what that mission must be, uh, in fact is, what, it, what our purpose is, uh, is in being there, and avoid mission creep. I think that's is essential. it clear to you what our mission is in Afghanistan? I'm not sure that the Harper government has done anything to explain to us why we are there now. The purpose in 2001 was one thing. 2000 and 
five, I can understand. But why we are there now in the capacity that we're now has never been explained clearly to Canadians, and I think that needs to be done. And the Harper government kept held accountable. If we have time, we will go back to that question. If you want to do some input on this, we'll, we'll come back in a minute. But we'll, we'll continue now with uh, Samuel Michael Frank uh, uh, from the Canadian Action Party. He has also a question on foreign policy. And please uh, tell us which one it is and what, uh, what your answer would, would be. Okay, well, my question here is uh, regarding uh, human rights as uh, enforced by the United Nations. Uh, the first answer to this question um, says that the UN should have the means to enforce sanctions authorized by the International Court of Justice. Of course, the problem I'm sure we're all aware with sanctions is that they tend to attack the poor people of a nation uh, while leaving the uh, people in control to uh, wait out the problem. So um, sanctions often have their own host of problems for the country where you are trying to bring human rights in. And what in would effect, you do in a state of sanctions? I'm sorry? What would you do in a state of sanctions? You said you, you don't agree with the idea of sanctioning people because that would punish uh, the poor people. Yes. And my question is, what would you do in a state? If what you, I do instead you, of sanctions? That's right. Instead of sanctions, what would you use? I'm going to go to the next answer first here, and then I'm going to address that in a minute. All right. The next answer right. here says, UN should help enforce international criminal court decisions. And of course, um, criminal court decisions enforced by the UN certainly has uh, its own share of um, problems. But uh, again, there is uh, some good being accomplished here. Now, both of these... Um, I can understand your reservations. Both of these are better uh, opportunities than the military solution that's being proposed. Certainly, I mean, the military solution causes nothing but death and destruction, whereas these options at least are peaceful ways of enforcing the same thing with their own host of side effects. To, uh, to try and propose a better solution than this is, sounds almost impossible to me because no way of solving human rights problem is not going to lend its own share of uh, casualties. However, what I was going to say about the about these answers is that no institution, whether it's the United, United Nations, nor the Canadian government, nor the American government, is ever going to be relied upon, no matter which people and no matter how benevolent their intentions are in power, is ever going to be relied upon to enforce things like human rights, things like justice, unless a system of direct democracy is in place. Okay, so uh, you, you, you mean that the direct democracy should decide what human rights violations Absolutely. are or not. Yes, and not, if the people uh, at the nations. time, based upon a direct democratic participation, are going to condone the UN uh, handling a, a situation of human rights, then of course the UN is entitled to at that time. And but how, this answer we, can't be unilaterally put forth. All right, so how are we going to find out this uh, direct democracy type of answer? Do we need a big computer where everybody goes and puts an answer and we run a poll similar to nowpolling.ca? Is that what you're saying? Well, that's certainly a possibility, and I have great faith in nowpolling.ca for that very reason. And of course, as it grows, it will certainly lend its share of solutions to a lot of problems in the world. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We, we move on to uh, uh, Brenda Locke and, uh, and uh, see what questions she has and uh, what her answer is. Very okay. briefly. Okay. So my question is about humanitarian aid to uh, Haiti. All right. Um, the, uh, do you want me to read the... Uh, yes, please. Okay. Some of the answers and so tell us if you agree with them or you have the, a new one. Yeah. The first, uh, the first one said, should be provided only when politicians are elected through a verified honest election. Um, I, uh, I don't agree with that. I think uh, Canada's aid should be given regardless of the, pol the political status in a country. However, I do think we always have to consider, um, consider uh, how that aid will be um, given out to people and to ensure that it actually gets to the people in that country. So uh, we should always have concern over black market and that is, kind is of Canada thing. Is Canada giving some aid to Haiti now? Pardon me? Is Canada providing some aid to Haiti at the moment? I, I don't know the answer know. to that. Okay. You know that uh, we have some RCMPs there and some soldiers perhaps through the United Nations in Haiti. Yes. So there is some way of, uh, call it aid or intervention. Yes. Uh, we are there. And I think the question refers to what would you do about it? Do you think that's right? Or should we withdraw or should we change our aid from uh, uh, security and to uh, maybe education or health? 